button. Okay, Ian, go for it. Ian, you raised your hand. Okay, so maybe not. So anyway, Luca Ionello is an artist. He is a fifth grade mathlete, and he created Mario and did a really, really nice job. He also created Batman, okay, which I love. He, and he did something very creative. So I gave him the coordinates for Snoopy, sit laying on his house, which is very cute, but he went further. He actually designed Woodstock to be sitting on top of, of Snoopy, and then he actually gave me the coordinates for Woodstock. How cool is that? So you guys get really creative. And, and Pete, this is what I want you guys to do. I gave you guys, um, and Pete, you can see from about three or four weeks ago, you can see different uh, pictures that I gave you guys using coordinates. So I hope you go back and look at, the, uh, at my website for that. Um, he also did Superman, which is kind of cool, very symmetrical, but not entirely symmetrical. And then he created Sonic. And Sonic the Hedgehog, oh. beautiful, beautiful job. I really, really love it. I'm not sure why I was writing coordinates on top of his drawing. Uh, I'll just erase those. Um, and then this little girl, Allison, dilated a chess piece by a factor of two, and then she dilated the letter K to a factor of three, and then this other student, Alice, developed her own letter A and then dilated it to a scale factor of two. So I thought you guys what? would find that really, uh, really, and she, she's only- Can you charge, the, can you charge the oh, for Somebody for is yourself? in the background. Can you, um, if that's you, can you mute yourself? Thank you, Blake. I appreciate that. So Blake, you're right in the middle of your house, like um, uh, a kitchen. So that means people are going to be walking around, which is totally fine. Okay. But if you want to go to a quiet room, you won't have to mute yourself. But if you don't, then you will. So we can hear everything in the background. Okay. We're going to get started. And what I wanted to tell you first is that I'm a little sad. I'm a little sad that spring break was essentially canceled. Yeah. I am supposed to be right now in the land of Israel. Okay. It is the land is my homeland, right? From where my people come. I've been there once. My wife has never. We had planned this trip for a year. But guess what? Every single one of you had somewhere to go. And I'm going to show you London, Paris, China, DC, Orlando, Disney World, Boston, uh, Nantucket, Sanibel, New Jersey, San Diego, East Hampton, Miami, Spain, BVI's, Toronto, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, Agunquit, Maine, LA, Bonita, Florida, you know this? Uh, Jamaica, Ontario, Georgia, uh, Turks and Caicos, Key West, Aspen, Naples, Florida, Beaver Creek, Colorado, Italy. Oh my God, the list goes on. Would you guys like to go on a trip with me today? Yes. We're going to go. We're going to go to all these places right now. And here we go. Before we go, though, I want us to think like mathematicians. But I actually learned during my last class, and there's enough girls on this uh, call that maybe one of you used to be a brownie or, uh, or is a brownie or a, um, a Girl Scout. Is the Girl Scout motto, be prepared? Can you confirm that? Okay, I'm a Boy Scout. Yeah, oh, and, and you know that be prepared is a, um, you guys know that be prepared is a motto for the Boy Scouts. Yeah, Boy I Scouts. am a Boy Scout. <laughs> right, so you do know that that is the motto, which is fantastic. Um, and of course, Cub Scouts, I, I get it, I get it. Now, mathematicians, just like chess players, always think ahead 
always think ahead. I want you to appreciate what your parents have to do when you go on a vacation. And I wrote out an entire page of what you guys should be thinking about in order to pack for your trip. The most important thing, in my opinion, is not to be next to a smelly bathroom on the airplane. So I know that you might think that that's silly, but if you, have you ever been sitting near a smelly bathroom on an airplane? Um, Actually, yes. Yeah, well, Claire says yes, and I have to tell you, I wanted to jump off the plane, but I didn't have a parachute, so I didn't do that. So in order to prevent that, you can actually plan ahead. The other thing that's happened to me before is I was in Spain once, and my credit card stopped working. I couldn't buy food. I couldn't buy nothing. We, were, we had nothing, okay? And I found out that I was supposed to call my bank to let them know that I was traveling, and they thought somebody stole my credit card, so they stopped it. Now, that's a, bit, that's a bad thing. The next thing is foreign currency. So you get to Colombia. I went to Colombia this, um, this February down in South America, and they use something called pesos. They're different than Mexican pesos. They're Colombian oh. pesos. And I was prepared. I had pesos. And so when I wanted to purchase something where you only were allowed to use cash, I was prepared. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is the cell phone. The cell phone is not just a way to make phone calls. You know that it's your camera, but most importantly, it's your global positioning system. And I want to ask you guys, you know that you put your coordinates in, where you want to go, it gives you directions. Can anybody tell me how? How does it work? Who can give me a description about how the GPS system works? Do you understand it? And I'm going to start with Alexander and then Blake. And next Satellites. time, raise your hand electronically. Go for it, Alexander. Satellites. Great, great start. Go for it, uh, Blake. Well, I think satellites, like Alexander said, and the, um, the satellites cover different spots, but you need cell towers too because you need to know where the directions are and the cell tower can like scan it so it knows the streets and the roads and the I'm giving I'm giving both of you boys a big big thumbs up. Now I want to hear from Claire. Pete. Doesn't it use longitude and latitude? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Lila, you had your hand up too. I was gonna say the same thing as um the first okay yeah. good 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 oh, and okay, okay guys yeah i'm gonna teach you now something that i learned about a while ago that i love satellites okay are they're like you know like rocket ships okay they weigh as much as a car so they weigh really? maybe even a small truck they weigh about four thousand pounds wow. now the heavier the satellite is, the more expensive it is to propel it out of our atmosphere. Now, Claire, your background right now is suggesting, Claire P, that you are in outer space. Now, these satellites actually go 12,000 miles off of our planet. My. Who knows how many miles airplanes go when airplanes fly at the highest ian how high are they um i think about maybe four miles well that's about 36,000 very... feet they go they yeah. go 36,000 feet i know that yeah and yeah. and that's about six miles oh now yeah. satellites go 12,000 miles 
So if we wanted to know the factor of satellites to the altitude of an airplane, who can tell me how many times six goes into 12? Um, Say it. Two. And Zero. Guess what? That's satellites two. are 2,000 times higher altitude-wise than airplanes. Now, have you ever looked up in the night sky and seen what you thought was a shooting star, but it was very faint Wait, light and it was moving at a constant rate? Have you ever seen that? Yeah, I have. I was, when I was like five, my dad explained it to me. And that's a satellite. Now, I love watching satellites go across the sky. Um, a lot of other people are not into it because they think it <laughs> skewers the sky. Yes, sir, Pete. I once saw a YouTube live stream and it was tracking like the ISS. So it was something oh, so did, like that, that when too. you can see it in your area. And, and Pete, is that the International Space Station? Yeah. Wow, that's so, so cool. Now guys, we listen to probably this. probably have those for satellites. I think you guys will like this. The US military, okay, the people that protect our country, they're the ones that developed the technology for GPS. They started with 27 satellites in orbit. There are only 24 satellites that are working at any time. Three satellites are there just in case something goes wrong. Now, those satellites are talking to each other. And I'm going to give you a two-dimensional a two-dimensional description of how it works. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. The satellites I believe it's waves, have, right? It's through waves? Well, they definitely talk through waves, radio waves. <coughs> Hold on one second. Binary code. Wait, can you hear me? Present more phones. I apologize, guys. I've been teaching since uh, uh, 1 o'clock today or 12 o'clock. Wow. So I'm a little, uh, I'm losing my voice. Anyway, Seven hours. I'm going to give you three satellites today. The first satellite's name is Boise. The second satellite's name is Minneapolis, and the third satellite's name is going to be Tucson. So I am lost. I am lost, and I don't know where I am. So I ask this man, I say, hey, buddy, um, where am I? And he says, you're 620 miles from Boise. Am I here? Am I there? Am I there? Yeah. Am I here? Why did he give me bad directions? Go ahead and tell me. Oh, yeah. because satellites are always moving. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm asking a man, I... and I, he says that I am, I am 625 miles from Boise, Idaho. Idaho. Why oh. were those bad directions? And Pete, go for it. Maybe because satellites didn't communicate. Forget, forget about the satellites. Well, oh, you're right or... about that. Peter. Oh, because it's not. You, you could Guys. be anywhere in the circle. Yeah. Who just said that? Lila. Lila. Yes. <laughs> Guys, there are an infinite number of points where I could be on that circle. Now, enter what Pete said, which was the second satellite. I say to a woman that I meet in the same area, I say, hey. I'm lost. Can you tell me where I am? And she says, you are 690 miles from Minneapolis. And I go, oh my God, here we go again. But then, why am I happy now? Why am I happy that I've talked to my second satellite? Caroline. Um, maybe because you like understand it now. But where, but don't, um, haven't I lowered my choices from an infinite number of choices to fewer? Claire, what do you think? Claire P. Um, because you know that you're 625 miles from um, the first one. 
I forget what's called, and 600... Ninety miles from Minneapolis. Right. Well, that's not really helpful information because you could already be in Minila Minneapolis, but you could be in a part. They could be talk. You could be like on the edge of Minneapolis. Minneapolis. But guys, but they could be talking it's because about because they're connected. Minneapolis. Now I like uh, and, and Pete, can you give your your assessment, please? Um. It like narrows it down a bit more, or oh my I, god, it narrows it down to only two points, guys. It can be either point A or point B. The satellites, when two satellites talk to each other, they literally can find you in two separate points. Now, enter the third satellite. A third person tells me that I am 615 miles from Tucson, Arizona, and guess what? Am I in position A or position B? Say it out loud. B. And you must be in position B. So this method is actually called triangulation. There are some other ways to describe the method, but satellites use triangulation technology and they send radio frequencies, electromagnetic radio frequencies. Who knows how fast those frequencies travel? Who can share yeah. that? How fast those systems travel? Say it out loud if you know. What's the speed, guys? Say it out loud. Anyone want to share? Uh, anybody want to share? It is the speed of... Sound. Sound. It is the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles a second per second, Shit. and guess what? Come on. The, the satellite is 12,000 miles away. So it takes what portion of a second for that signal to reach us? So what um, do you think, guys? Lila, are you working on this? So I've got 186,000 divided by 12,000, and I know that I can divide the top and the bottom by 1,000, to get rid of my zeros. Now, what am I going to divide top and bottom by, guys? Come on. 186 over 12 equals, come on, cut it in half. Half, half. Go ahead, Ava. Half, I don't know. Half, half. Um, 93. 93 over? Six. And divide both of those by three now. 15.5. Um, Very 15. good. So it's 31 over 2. Bam, did you get 31 over 2? Yeah, I did. Okay, great. So guys, it takes 1 15th, essentially, 1 15th of a second for that signal to reach us. That's why I got 15.5. Snap your finger right now. You know that it took you more than 1 15th of a second to snap your finger? And in that instant, these satellites are talking to your cell phone. Pretty amazing. By the way, I am very happy that I do not have to pay for 24 satellites to be in orbit. I'm really glad that you guys and your parents are sharing the cost uh, with the rest of the people on the planet. So we have seven and a half billion people on the planet and they're all using the same technology now. Let's move right now to Claire S. Are you guys ready? Is, do I still have Claire with me? Yes, I do. Uh, no, Claire S, Claire, what was the other? Claire P, I think? Yeah. I don't think she's, oh yeah, she's with us. Um, so she talked about longitude latitude. Thanks to our friend, Renee Descartes, 
Do you remember him? He's the person that invented the coordinate plane. Do you remember that? Well, yeah. he also was able to invent a situation where we could have longitude, which is vertical, latitude, which is horizontal. Who can tell me what this very special latitude is in the center right here? Say it out loud. The Mon equator. This is the equator. And notice that the way the map works, it goes up by 10 degrees north. 10 degrees north, 10 degrees north, 10 degrees north until it reaches the North Pole. Pole. North Pole. And then it's at zero degrees latitude. Yeah. Not north, no, zero to south. zero degree. That's zero degrees longitude, right? No, this is zero degrees latitude. Everybody say it. Lat flat. Lat, 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 lat. 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 Now, latitude comes or from the Latin way. word, guys, quiet, please. Uh, somebody's talking while I'm talking. Um, latitude comes from the Latin phrase, essentially, uh, width, wide, it means wide. So um, the other day, I was walking uh, on the Charles River, and my, I was with my friend, who was, uh, we all had masks on, and he was walking his dog. And I said, you know, I said, Irv, you really need to give those people more latitude. Because he was too close to other people with his dog. And I didn't feel like that was appropriate based on what's going on now. So I, I used the word latitude. So latitude, Baron, means flat. Horizontal. Or Horizontal. Now, are you yeah, guys I know. ready? I know what latitude is. I was saying, like, was the North, like, I was saying, like, how the center of the North Pole is basically zero degree two. Longitude. It is, That's what I was trying wait, to say. Wait, 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 hold on. The North Pole is 90 degrees north. Everybody say that. 90, 90 degrees, degrees north. north. What about, One second. What about 90 degrees south? That's the South Pole. And that it's is the there. South Pole. Now, what is this line called that is vertical at zero degrees running through Greenwich, England? Very close I've to I've been London. there. What? 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 Hold on. It has a Sorry. name. This vertical line what? has a very special name. Uh. I and know think, this, but I don't. Think of the numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 15, 17, no. 19, 23, Prime? 29. Prime? It's it not coming to me. Prime Meridian. Everybody say it. Oh, it's oh yeah. Prime Meridian. Oh, now, the we Prime Meridian. Oh. Meridian. Now, I'm just going to mute everybody. Come. Isn't there also like... So, Green uh, or something? You guys can now um, uh, raise your hand electronically because I muted everybody because some people were talking at the same time that I was. Uh, Barum, I am going to unmute you. Go for Isn't it. Isn't there a thing also in uh, in uh, in um, geography called like the Greenwich or something? Oh well, well it's called Greenwich Mean Time, which oh, is right. essentially at the prime meridian and all time zones yeah. flow east and west from that point. And now Ian. Yeah, so that was, yeah. I've been to Greenwich. Oh, wow, that's really cool. I, I've never been to Greenwich and I've never met a lot of people. When I was on a trip to, to the UK last summer, we went to the Greenwich. Now, could I ask you guys right now, to please give me the coordinates of letter K. I want you to give me the coordinates of letter K on this map. And I want you to send it to me in a chat. And I want to give you a few, um, a few parameters. You have to give me the latitude first, that is north or south. You then have to give me longitude 
and you have to say east or west. So you give me the degree amount, north or south, that's latitude. You give me the degree amount, east or west, that's longitude. So everybody send me a chat. I'm waiting for chats here. Oh, this looks good. This looks good. I like it. I don't love your West Ian or Barum. Alani, you're really close, but Alani, you didn't give me Norths and Wests and Souths and and um and now now Barum, I want you to give it a shot. Like look at the K, look at the K, and I'm gonna just you know, here's the K right here. And you know that your latitude is opposite this guy right here. And your longitude is opposite that guy there. So I think that should be some direction for you. Okay. So, ooh. Now, Claire P., I love the way you did it. So, Claire... Claire, where did you find the symbol for degree measurement? Claire, talk to me. All and then K. Guys, everybody do it. Alt K is, I'm, I'm gonna do it right now. Alt K, did it work? Oh wait, I, I have to be in text. Alt K. Did it work? Yes. Yeah, it did. It's brilliant. Claire, thank you so much. You taught me how to make a degree sign. I've never known that before. So thank you very much. Now, if you said that this was 40 South, did everybody start with 40 South? Yes? Yeah. And did everybody then go 45 West? Do you guys see it? So it's 40 south and 45 west. So now, can you all give me the coordinates of point R? The coordinates of point R right around where Sweden and Denmark is. So send me a quick chat, point R. Where's point R? Right here. Bam, look at the screen. Yeah, I see, I see. And can you guys say it on three? One, two, three, go. 60, 60, 60 latitude north, north, 15, 30. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, and as you can see, these lines are actually curved. Mm -hmm. um, everybody take a little journey with me here. Do you guys agree that north of the equator is appropriate to call it the northern hemisphere? Yes? Yes. Yeah. South of the equator, obviously, is what? Mm -hmm. Southern hemisphere. And the east, of, east of the prime hemisphere. meridian? Eastern hemisphere and west of the prime meridian? West Eastern hemisphere. East hemisphere, Eastern Hemisphere, and yeah. Western and now, Hemisphere. Where is North America? Um, the in the Western Hemisphere. North Western Hemisphere. 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 And I want you to send me a chat with the degree measurement of that line. And by the way, I'm telling you in advance, this is a trick question. 
This is a, a what? A, what are you asking a, for? An, okay, I just drew a very thick green line. Okay, and I want you to tell me. So for instance, if I drew this line, you would say zero degrees latitude. Okay, that's the equator. But I didn't draw, draw that line. I drew the line on the right here. And I want. I know. I, I, well, good, but don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. Send a chat. Ooh. Now remember, you always have to give your east west. But I told you this is a tricky, tricky question. Oh, and by the way, there is somebody who needs. To, oh, uh, Lila, can you rename yourself? Because when I looked at this, I couldn't tell that it was you. Um, okay. Just rename yourself. Make it easier for me. Now, Ian, zero degrees longitude is the prime meridian. Zero degrees longitude is the prime yeah, meridian. Yeah, I know. And Caroline, go for it. Where's the middle? Huh? Caroline, you raised your hand? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, I just, I just put it down. Um, okay, guys, very interesting. Lila said 180 east, and I agree with her. But why is this tricky? Blake. Well, no, I thought it was, I thought it was all of those numbers that you drew the line on. No, the, those numbers are the lat numbers. Those are the latitude numbers. This is a longitude. Now, why was, oh, wait a minute. Why is this tricky, guys? Isn't this degree measurement the same location on the planet yeah. as the blue? Yeah. Isn't that 180 west? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And isn't that, guys, look at the prime meridian. Go 180 degrees east or 180 degrees west. Don't you end up on the back side of the earth? Yeah, yeah. yeah. On, the again, prime meridian. on the front side. Actually, the prime meridian on the back side is called the international date line. It's got yeah, the international date line. So there were three the people that answered my question without the east or, or west. Technically, if you just say 180 degrees, it's actually an accurate longitude. Now, I'm going to give you my little trick, the next time you guys uh, are downstairs, I want you to go grab an orange. And I want you to carefully peel it without destroying the fruit. And I want you to look at this and tell me, <laughs> does this represent latitude or longitude? Latitude. Well, latitude. it would latitude. definitely be latitude if an orange sat yeah. like this. These are lat lines, mm -hmm. lat lines, but that's not the way an orange sits. An orange sits like this, and that blue dot represents the what? Longitude, that's what I said. That's what I said. That's the that's North Pole. That's what I said. Pole. And <laughs> this guy under here is the what? South Pole. And what are these lines, ladies and gentlemen? Latitude, longitude no, lines. Longitude lines. Long lines. Longitude lines. Longitude lines. And so an orange is one of the best examples of longitude, in my opinion. Okay? They really are beautiful. Now, I'm going to draw you. I'm going to draw for you a... Uh, I'm going to actually draw it right, yeah, I'll do it right here, okay? So I want you guys to go to page, uh, it's in your packet, I think it's page, like, uh, page seven, please. Go to page seven, please, and I'm going to give you guys a couple of challenge questions. And... The first challenge question is, what is the degree measurement of the line I'm creating? Please send me a chat. 
with your conjecture. What just happened? I just got. So, I just got kicked from the meeting. Uh, say again, Baron. Oh, I just got kicked from the meeting and then I got back on right now. Yeah, you didn't get kicked. You you kicked yourself by accident. <laughs> you kicked um, no, I didn't kick on anything. Okay. It did hit on its own. And, and Baron, but do you know that when you think out loud, do you know that we all hear you? Yes. Okay, so I'm just letting you know that. I, I didn't know that you knew that. So, um, guys, we have a green horizontal line. Did you all send me a... Wait a minute, I don't have any chats here. Mm. Uh, I'm still so, thinking. Yeah, but guys, I'm you, thinking. you've got to give me north or south with latitude. Oh, and easy. I got, I got south. Some, I got something from Pete. Uh, I don't agree with it. Oh, and by the way, all of your answers are down here. All the possible answers are down here. Oh, okay. Oh, no. oh. So there's no 30 oh, or 60. Oh, what, what are you doing? And, and Baron, I I want you an to think, absolute Baron, time. I'm going to mute you right now. And only, I'm only doing that. So, yeah, so you just know you, you, have, you can't think out loud. All right, but it's, it's disruptive to the group, and, and I know you don't mean it, of course. Um, okay, so, I, oh, very good. Blake, Blake is the first one that got it. And remember, Claire, 90 degrees south is the south pole. That's 90 degrees south, all right? And, okay, guys, on three, say it. One, two, three, go. 40 degrees south. 40? Guys, you don't see any 40s, 40. Here, do you? 45. Okay, 45. so it is 45 degrees south. And guys, why is it 45? Because it's the halfway point between 0 and 90 degrees. This would be what? 45 degrees? North. 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 Very, very good. Okay, so that challenge... Now I'm going to give you something that's a little bit harder. And I want you to chat this to me. Very important. Remember, this is zero longitude. I have background noise, so I'm going to mute myself. Okay, thank you. Oh, Blake, Lila, absolutely beautiful. Um, guys, I need to hear from more of you quickly. Ooh, nice, nice. Caroline, you nailed it. Um, remember, Claire, zero longitude is the prime meridian. Zero longitude uh, and the prime meridian. I'm blanking. Okay. Now, guys, let's just take a little journey, okay? If this guy is 180 west and this guy is zero and this is the halfway point at red, isn't the red 90 west? Yes? So what must be the black line halfway between zero and 90? Say it out loud. Come on, say it out loud, guys. 45, 45 degrees west. It is 45. The black line is 45 west. The red line is 90 west. Now keep adding 45. The blue line is... 135. 135. 180. It's 135. 135 west. Just like this line is, say it out loud. 135 east. 135 east. That's exactly right. So really, really cool, guys. Um, and now I want you guys, when the next time you see a cell phone, 
take your cell phone or your iPad or any tablet you have okay. and go open the Compass app. Okay. When you open the Compass app, and it's something very interesting. Can we do it now? Uh, well, you can if it's handy. Yeah. If you can, it's, here. Can. it's not and, here. And Blake, your brother, Grant, pointed out something really interesting. Not only does it give the latitude and open the compass, but it also no, gives it doesn't. You, it doesn't on mine. Sorry, somebody is just same. It doesn't on mine. Okay, I'm going to mute all because people are talking at the same time. Please raise your hand electronically, and then I will call on you. Okay. Go ahead, Blake. It doesn't on mine. It does what? It doesn't say the um, oh, elevation, the elevation and where Yeah, it is. so so when Blake when um, Blake when Grant, Blake's brother, yesterday told me that it shows elevation, I didn't realize that. And it, it's elevation over uh, what's called sea level. And it's because, as I told you, satellites actually look at spheres, not circles. So it's three-dimensional. But Boston is 42 north, 71 west. Notice that this uh, decimal number is a negative 71. Negative 71 means no. 71 west. But Does somebody it, want to share? If you want to share, raise your hand, please, electronically. Then I call on you, and then everybody gets to do it. Go for it, Blake. But isn't that where you are? Not, you said where Boston is. Well, I live in where Boston. So I live in Boston proper, all right, right in the heart of Boston. Um, you guys are in maybe Wellesley or Weston or Needham, and your coordinates will be slightly different, but not that much. Are you guys interested in to know how many miles is one degree? So one degree of latitude is about 70 miles. One degree of longitude is about 55 miles. So if you are within 50 miles of somebody else, you're, you're gonna be within one degree, all right? Baron, you had, you had your hand up. Yeah, so it happened again, and so I just wanted to ask what's the question? So what's going on? Okay, buddy, I, uh, what I'm doing is I'm telling you guys about the Compass app on your phone or tablet will give you your GPS coordinates, your latitude north, we'll give it to longitude me. west. And I'm going to show you when Mr. Kramer was going to travel to Israel, um, I was supposed to be in Jerusalem right now, which as you can see, and can you guys see that I am between 31 north and 32 north here? Mm -hmm. And that is 31.7 north. And then if you look at my, uh, my longitude, I'm between 35 and 36, <laughs> but much closer to what? Much closer to 35. So that's 35.1 east. Now, who can explain to me? I've unmuted everybody now. Who can explain to me why Israel is 35 east and not 35 west. Who can explain that? Why is Israel considered east? Ian, go for it. Um, because it's on the east side of the prime meridian. That's exactly right. Now, 35 degrees, guys, you know that that's not that far from the prime meridian. So Israel is pretty close to the prime meridian. Now, another thing that I put in your packet that I think you'll really enjoy is I love the country of China. And I've been there a few times. I'm a real fan. Um, I happen to love Beijing. Now, Beijing is, if you look at Beijing, and I, I, for some reason, I want to apologize. Uh, okay, there we go. Oh, somebody's making a, a banging noise. 
And if they would stop that, I'd be most appreciative. Do you notice, guys, that Beijing has, is between 30 north and 45 north? But it's almost two thirds of the way from 30 to 45. So I would call that approximately 40 north. And if you notice, North Korea, which is not so friendly to the United States, nor friendly to South Korea, we, the United States and South Korea are our allies. Uh, North Korea is, is not, not a friendly, but they are right on the 40th uh, parallel north. By the way, somebody is still tapping something and I'm gonna ask them if they could stop that. I'd be most appreciative. Now, Beijing is 40 north. Now, it's also between 105 and 120 east, but it's closer to 120, and it's about 116 east. Now, can anybody tell me what Beijing and Boston have in common? Who can raise their hand electronically and tell me what Boston and Beijing have in common. It's a real, it's raise your hand electronically. Alexander, go for it. They both have coronavirus there. Actually, the entire world has yeah. coronavirus. So that's, yeah, that's technically that's, correct. Yeah. But that's not what Boston and Beijing have in common, I other than the fact is. that they start with a B. Ava, you have to unmute yourself though, Ava. Well, I was gonna no. say they start with the letter B. Oh, well, that's good. It does. It does. It does. I know. Um, 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 who else? Who else? Who else? Caroline, go for it. Um, aren't they like this country capital? Or something? Uh, They're like the capitals or something? Oh, well, Beijing, I believe, is the, cap is the capital of China, but Boston is not the capital of the United States. <laughs> although yeah. it is the capital of Massachusetts. So there is a connection there, and I agree with that. What about you, Pete? You'll have to un unmute yourself, buddy. Try to unmute um, yourself. I, um, I, it couldn't let me unmute myself. Anyways, um, I think it's they're in common because they're both in like the 40 degree um, latitude. Um, yes, guys, they say? are full 40 degrees. Ian, what were you going to say, buddy? Um, they were on, they're on the exact same latitude. latitude. Yes. Now, guys, when we travel... From different hemispheres. Yeah, yeah, but one's right. on the latitude. Guys, yeah. they're in different hemispheres. When, when my wife and I travel... Now, look at this, guys. This is Beijing a better, is east and Boston is west. This is a better view. So, Boston is around the 41st parallel, 42nd parallel right there. Of the West. And there is a restaurant in Boston called Lola 42. And essentially what it is, oh. it's like Lola, like latitude, it, it has food from the 42nd North parallel. So it'll have food from- We've gone, my family's gone there before. Yeah, it'll have food from Japan and China and um, uh, Turkey and Greece Ooh. and Italy no, Uzbekistan. and Spain and Portugal and, and the Uzbekistan. States. Say again? And Uzbekistan. You see <laughs> right over them. Um, I do have to tell you that I've never had a, a meal from to but it is I haven't cool. either. Now, notice this. Has it from a lot of the stands? Yes, now listen, please. Oh, you can get now, Oh, I'm going to mute you all here because you guys are talking now. So here's the deal. Um, there is a restaurant in Nantucket. Nantucket is slightly south of Boston. It's about 70 miles south. So it's actually Nantucket is in the 41st north for Nantucket, okay? And they have a restaurant called Lola 41. But Lola 41 and 42 really go through the same countries throughout the world. 
So they have the same cuisine, but they have a little bit of a different name. So I hope you guys really enjoy the exploration that we did today. There's and Mongolia. I'm going to show you one other thing, guys. We don't I'm have ask my life. parents to eat Mongolian there. food is like what some people might consider not tasty because there's some things that people wouldn't usually eat, like bugs and scorpions. Well, you know, when we were people in aren't uh, very fond of when, when we were in Colombia, we went to a market where they used every single organ of the cow. Ooh, and we're talking that's disgusting. every organ. We're talking hearts, livers, <sighs> feet, <sighs> heads, that's no. everything. Now, now, Pete. Pete Wait, well, in Asian it. Greece, they had black. Now, I'm going to mute everybody here <laughs> just so I can finish the lesson here because we have to go in two minutes. But I want to tell you this: you have to be respectful of other people's uh, cultures. And the way I started this meeting was talking about preparation. One of the things that happens when you do your Boy Scout motto: "Be prepared," and you do your research is you find out that there's a beautiful history and culture in every place that you go. And it's a really good thing to try the local cuisine and that's a lot of fun. Now, the thing I want you to work on this week, take all the destinations that the mathletes were gonna go to and put them on the world map. So Israel, some people were going to Hawaii. Some people were going to China. Some people were going to California. Some people were going to Turks and Caicos. Some people were going to Spain. Some people were going to Italy. Some people were going to France. And what I want you to do is use the coordinates to find all these amazing places. Now, to do our cheer, we are going to do it from Lola 90. We're going to do it from Lola 90, negative 90. We're going to say 90 south, yeah. and we're going to go by 15 degrees. Ready? Go. 90, 90 south. south. 75 south. 75 south. Come on. 60 south. Oh. Um, 45, 45 south. 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 Oh, yeah, whoops. 30 south. Um, 30, 40, south. 30 south. 30 south. 15 south. Um, 15 15 south. south. Zero south. south. But don't ever say negative zero south. south. Two, four, six, eight. We appreciate Mathlete. 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 Guys, I will see you in 167 bye. hours. Go bye, 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 bye. Orange, guys. Bye. Go feel an orange bye. right now. Okay. Say goodbye to your friends. Goodbye. And go peel an orange bye. and show your parents the longitude, and then eat from the North Pole to the South Pole, or from the South Pole to the North Pole, or or go from the East Pole to the West Pole. No, there's no East Pole. There's no West Pole. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Terrell.